you've got a, an amazing, amazing uh, group of, uh, uh, well, at least members of this wonderful, wonderful industry that we have, the food industry. Uh, this is something I'm trying to clear up here just to ensure that you can see clearly. Uh, great. All right. So just so that you know who I am, my Daka Gatumia is my name and um, I serve at Centonomy uh, as CEO, but also as one of the lead trainers that, uh, at the yeah, company. And we are also navigating this, this COVID-19 time. Imagine um, the reason that we're in a session like this is simply because of that. We cannot do it the way we would love to do it. The human interaction is something that we miss dearly. And so if you are in this space and able to uh, just think through uh, some of the issues that we may be going through, that's what I'm going through as well. So uh, my Daka Gatumia is my name and I serve at Centonomia, as I said, we are a company that is dedicated to building your wealth creation capacity. What does that mean? It means that when we started out at Centonomy, it was all about just personal financial management and, um, and that was it. And we'd help you with your investment planning and all that. But we realized over time that the wealth creation journey includes entrepreneurship because it, one of your wealth creation tools could be a business. Um, we also recognize the wealth creation journey includes um, your personal growth in that uh, space. And so we have the career hub. And then we started training young people as well. So we have a, a whole list of programs that we do at Centonomy. Uh, but for you this afternoon, uh, we're gonna tell you a little bit about our entrepreneurship program because I think as a business owner in this area, this is probably the one that is going to give you uh, the greatest benefit for what you want to achieve. And so I invite you to participate. I invite you to, to get into this and I won't take any more time. I want to begin by, <clears throat> I want to begin by uh, recognizing uh, our wonderful list of guests who are here with us. I'll just call them out and, and invite you, um, our wonderful speakers, if you can just switch on now your videos and your, um, your microphones as well, so you can be able to greet us as well. And we'll start off uh, with Wanjiro Mambo. Uh, she's also an alumnus of uh, Centonomy as well, director of Empire Coffee Lounge and Eatery. So, Wanjiro, are you out there somewhere so you can greet us and tell us a little bit about yourself, just introduce yourself um, and your business to us, and then we can move on quickly. Okay. Hi, hi, Waidaka. Hi, everybody and everyone who is watching. Good My name is Wanjiro. You. you can see me? Yes. Okay. Yes. Wanjiro Mambo is my name. I run a restaurant in Napa Hill called uh, Blend Empire Ventures. That's the company name, but the restaurant is called Empire Coffee Lounge and Eatery. Uh, this is uh, a tough time for us, uh, but you're hanging on there and we hope things will, will get better, if not worse than they are right now. But also I mm -hmm. uh, can mention, I have an investment also in uh, these, uh, there are two nightclubs that's uh, in Mumbai, in Nairobi and uh, Thika. So you can see, all your eggs are in one basket and it's hard hit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, well, the, the, the restaurant has been in operation for one year since uh, last year, February, it was part of expansion from the nightclub business to food industry. Uh, so this is the year we thought it's the year, 2020 is our year, but COVID happened. Yeah. Well, well the year is not over, Anjiro. So. <laughs> Uh, I think we must we must keep that in mind even as we move forward. All right. Okay. So thank you so much for joining us. We really really appreciate that. Um, let me go on. Since Anne, you're already on the screen, I will give you the next opportunity <laughs> to speak. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you for moving quickly, Anne. <clears throat> Mugo, uh, co-founder, the Farm Gang. Tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, about your business. Thank you so much, Aitaka. Hi, everyone. My name is Anne Mugo. I'm a co-founder of the Farm Gang. We are an organic, I am an organic farmer, but I major in strawberry farming. But since COVID started, we have noticed a demand for other vegetables. So we have moved to broccoli, cauliflower, spinach, all those uh, exotic organic vegetables. 
We all, I also co-own a breakfast cafe with my husband and a logistics firm called the Zodwa Logistics. Wow. Yes. Excellent, excellent. And it's so good because then you have a bit of a, a, a perspective on different industries, even as you're going to share. So I'm, I'm really, really glad that you've managed to join us. Um, this is excellent. Let's go over to Rina. Rina, are you in the house? If you can switch on. I'm your... here. Wonderful. I want to see your face. If we can see it. Ruby needs to start my video. Uh, okay, I will look for you and I'll try and do it <laughs> myself. Since Ruby has refused to get you involved, I will get, ah, there we go. Mm -hmm. There you <laughs> oh, go. Hey. Kind of, that's not fair. <laughs> 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 Ruby, you've never learned. You have to blame someone else for your own technical problem. Oh, okay, Waidaka. If for that reason only, that's yeah. fine. And seeing as I'm the boss here, that's how you pass on. <laughs> Rina, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Hi, hi everyone. Am I, sorry, am I pronouncing it properly? Is it Reina or Rina? Sorry, it's my, my mistake. Reina. Reina, like the one, Reina. like Mugua. Thank you, sorry, I'm so sorry. Reina. No, with an art then, sorry. sorry, sorry. So, Karibu Sana, food stylist. First of all, you have to explain what a food stylist is. I have no idea. Yay! You need to explain and then tell us a bit about yourself. So um, hi everyone, my name is Reina and I'm a food stylist, a recipe developer and a food content creator. So as Waitaka asked, a food stylist is someone who works with uh, food photographers and videographers to basically make food look beautiful. So that's what I do. I make food look beautiful in front of a camera. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. And how's the business been since... Uh... This uh, craziness began. Let's just say we are part of those people who have been forced to adapt um, as our services require the presence of both a photographer and a, or a videographer and myself. So with movement, lockdown, curfews, all those things, it's just been terrible. So we haven't had much going on. Actually, none. <laughs> when it comes to food standing, I have not had work out there since COVID, okay. COVID started, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I told you, we're all navigating this. I think the best, the best online um, description that I've been seeing, um, which is true, that we're not all in the same boat, but we're in the same storm. So um, it's, it's now beginning <laughs> to figure out how, which, how is our boat, individual boats going to get through this storm. So uh, yeah. Rina, we're, to, we're together in this. Thank you so much. I've seen a dear friend who I've not seen for a long time, uh, switch on her camera. Titi, how are you doing? Good. Can you see me? We can see you. Because I can't see myself. <laughs> we can see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. You now I can. Now I can. So, great. Oh. Tell us, uh, I, I might be able to give you like a long story about yourself. Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Um, I don't want to tell everybody your secrets, so uh -huh. you'll be the one. You'll be the one to tell us what you have been up to in in this uh, in this period of time, um, mm -hmm. and a little bit about your business as well. Karibu sana. Asante. So the, for the purposes of this talk, I'm, I'm here as an entrepreneur, and um, I I run a small hospitality business in in Karen. So that's what my business is, accommodation, and I host and, and cook for events. And uh, of course, that has come to a complete <laughs> stop, you know, with uh, even before we got shut down as, as a country, it, it, mm -hmm. it began to really slow down in January. And mm -hmm. uh, as, as of this point, the hospitality accommodation sector of my business is completely dead. So I have had to change. I have had to do something different. What have you done? So since I cook for events, I host events, I have beautiful gardens and I host events here. Um, I have taken the cooking aspect, um, uh, which I do for the events and I have made it an everyday business. Wow, wow, yeah. wow. Yeah. Yes. And, and that's the so, kind of adaptation that we have to look for 
in this space. So, I mean, that's, that's just brilliant. And um, uh, yeah, so, as we said, we're in the storm and your, your boat yes. has, taken a uh, has taken a different direction, I think, which is I, excellent. I tell you, I tell you, when the waves come, they hit you and where the direction that you face, you have to just keep moving, you know. <laughs> I hear you, I hear you, yeah. I hear you. Karibu sana, we'll be starting a little bit more as we go. Uh, up next, Lorna, where are you at? Mama Kebobo, uko I'm here. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Hi, everyone. You didn't seem Hello. very sure about that. That good to see you. It sounded <laughs> a bit uh, tentative. <laughs> What did no, I do? It's really, no, it's oh. really good to see you, Aidaka. <laughs> Karibu. Asante uh, sana. Yeah, I, tell guys about, about your business, although I'm, I'm sure many of us have used your spices. In yeah, places. I hope so. <laughs> uh, well, uh, my name is Lona Mweo. Uh, a lot of people know me as Mama Kebobo. Both, you know, are my names. Um, I'm in the food space. Uh, Lorna, are you still there? Because we are not hearing you very clearly at this moment. If you're still there, you can let us know. Uh, maybe we did lose her a little bit there. But Lorna will come back to you just now. Uh, but so that we can move on. Um, Patrick, I know I saw you earlier on. Karibu sana, Patrick Itao. Um, are you in Hello. the room? You, you, how are you doing, yes. man? I'm good, man. I, I you think, can hear me? Uh, I was feeling a little bit outnumbered. Yes, we can hear you clearly. Okay. Um, and, I, and I had to tread carefully in what I said. I was surrounded by all the wonderful ladies. Um, <laughs> thank you for joining me. You're a brave man as well. Uh, Tell us about yourself that. and your business. Hi, thank you, Aidaka. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Patrick. Um, I'm a food and product photographer and videographer. I also do content creation and recipe development as well. Wow. So uh, basically I shoot for restaurants that want to use content online or maybe for their menu. I also do videos to, for social media content as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, basically. Excellent. Have you worked with Reina? Yes, claims that quite a lot. This then, these are the things we're talking about. We are, <laughs> together in this as well. Thank you so much for joining us. So um, I'm just trying to see if, if, if Lona is back. Lona, have you managed to get back on? If you are, say so. Yes. Otherwise, we need... I don't know whether it's my network, but can you guys hear me? Yes. Ah, okay. Need to move on. I, I, Lona, you there? I hope we are... There you go. We can see you now, Lona. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, so uh, like I was saying, I, I do quite a lot in the food space. So from the spices to outside catering to recipe development and uh, authoring recipe books. Yeah. And uh, Corona has been quite an experience for me. Uh, I think we'll be getting into that a bit later on. But yeah, it's, yeah. it's been quite an eye opener for businesses. Expose, you know, we've been exposed for our weaknesses and our strengths are, you know, going to come out. <laughs> for sure, yeah. for sure. Okay, thank you so much. And thanks everyone for that quick, wonderful introduction. Now everybody knows who's in the room. Um, the best way that we're gonna have uh, to interact later on will probably be through the chat room, chat box. So as, you, as the, the ideas come, just maybe write them down and then we'll have some time for Q&A a bit later on. So um, ladies and gentlemen, let's get straight into this discussion. And somebody else is joining me as we speak. I will try and see if we can get that going. Okay. So don't, don't all jump in at the same time. Um, but the first question I know is a tough one. Um, what is the toughest thing that your business went through since COVID-19 hit? Don't all shout at the same time, just uh, hold your horses. Who, who's willing to go first? <laughs> go ahead, Wajiro. I see you. All right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I think for me, the worst thing that happened is uh, closing down completely. I tried to uh, run the restaurants. Of course, the nightclubs were shut way before. 
then yeah. curfew was introduced so that one is uh even that one you don't know how it will end or when it will be opened for the restaurants i really tried running it in march but it was a struggle because i am located in upper hill surrounded by many offices most of them are very international guys had to work from home or not come to work uh, at all mm. work in shift so it was zero business or you just open and uh few people walking in and that's the time the scare was real i think right now you're a bit relaxed we, we are trying to dodge we are behaving abnormally <laughs> but that time you guys were really <laughs> scared about it <laughs> then as usual i think as mama kebobo said where your weaknesses are exposed you realize sometimes we also operate on money in money out so you're caught in a bad fix so yeah. for us it's uh, shutting down you had very big dreams and goals and now you're wondering what next but all is not lost we hope uh, to catch up in the course of the year because you're planning to opening our doors on tuesday oh wonderful After, of was course de- was delivery Sorry? not an was not delivery not an option in your case okay Food it delivery. was an option and we tried it uh, we have we are we are in uh, the uber eats jumia glovo oh, okay but okay. also it was not sustainable staying open the cost of mm. staying open is very high Yeah. And also for these food apps they they map your area so you the people who can order food from you are people within a certain radius and I'm mm-hmm. surrounded by offices around my area few mm-hmm. residential and few yeah few few very few residential so the office people were a bit the orders from office offices were very minimal so not sustainable at all and I still feel people are still skeptical on ordering food from out yeah. You yeah, prefer yeah. it from home or work till half day go it home or carry food from home yeah so yeah we had to close the problem down problem is many of them are listening to centonomy where we are telling them to save their money and not to spend too much <laughs> exactly <laughs> our fault i agree <laughs> um, anyway Anyone else somebody out there been taking photos and stuff Ladies and gentlemen I was sorry maybe you didn't hear me clearly I was asking toughest things that you've gone through so you've had one the actual shutdown and what now to do anyone else with something they'd like to share over that So can put your hand up eh that's a good way to do it yes right now <laughs> um i think for me i'd say cancellation of projects indefinitely like you have people who you had said or you had plans on working okay. with um that has been the greatest scare and maybe you had taken a loan and you knew that some money was going to come in from somewhere So now that 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 shock of you are big relying on money which is not yours was in someone's pocket only the name of there was a project that was coming in so that in itself has just been one of the toughest things that I would personally say I've had to experience myself now I even know the true meaning of me first majure or papi lawyers <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah that it is a natural calamity it wasn't planned for you know that's besides right, even right. as much as we signed contracts and things like those so yeah it's been tough I hear you I hear you anyone else something different hi and go ahead you have to unmute your mic and meeting okay mine is a bit different because i represent uh the low income earners because the breakfast cafe caters for wala wasiwa mta so to speak and our base our cafe is a chapo base and we had loyal customers so the challenge is that we lost revenue because these guys are construction workers hawkers uh name it all the manual jobs you think and they would come in in the morning take uh, uh, tea with chapo come back in the afternoon take chapo and maharagwe or beans or dengu that is green grams and come back in the evening and take chapo and 
same thing. So wow. our girls cater for the low income earners. And when the, the corona hit, of course, they lost jobs. The curfew came in, we had to close uh, before seven and normally we close at around 11 so that we cater for wow. the, our customers who come later, maybe the guys from Matatu, like the driver and the conductor who close late and they have to come and eat at our base. Mm. So that is how we were affected. So we have lost uh, quite the revenue. We also closed for some time when everyone was scared, but we reopened like three weeks ago. And of course, it's not the same. Guys just okay. take one meal and that's it. All right. So there's a significant re reduction there. Anyone else waving for an opportunity? Then I can move on from there at that point. But we'll be getting some. So I'm not seeing any. Oh, yeah, Chichi, go ahead. You have to unmute on your side. OK. Am I unmuted go. now? There you go. I think I am. Um, with, with my business, um, I have people come in for events. And of course, we are not having any weddings. We are not having any chama meetings. We are not having any girls getting together, any you know, men coming for a business meeting <laughs> or even offices that will book for a lunch and, and come and have you know, a quiet lunch mm. and brainstorm and things like that. Mm. So that has all come to an end with the close of offices and businesses. And uh, of course, with regard to which was my main area before the hospitality, um, I do not have any clients coming and what was tough was to see that you had bookings, you know, for the weeks ahead. And, you know, once Corona began to be uh, a, a worldwide word on everyone's lips, you know, you, you have your bookings that are canceled. And, you know, there's, there's no fee. There's even no booking fee that you're left with. It just You just have to understand. So everything, watching everything literally come to a complete stop, standstill, nothing. Yeah. No client, no customer, no shilling. Yeah, uh, this is the reality of where we are at the moment. So um, some really serious stories. Anyone else are moving on now? I think, uh, I think we got that one, that one done pretty well. Um, so um, I, I noticed a couple of us have employees and I know when you say you've, you've closed the store or you've closed the business for a while or revenue is down, um, how are you dealing with employees and, and how, is it, how is it affected uh, that side of, of, of business when it comes to employees. Lona, maybe you can start us off um, because I, kn I know your wonderful team, um, both on the catering side and also on the, on the spices pr production line. Um, what's it been like for them and uh, for you managing them? It, it's been very um, difficult for me to let go of people I've had to interact with on a daily basis for the last a year or so, because these are people that fully depend Spend on my business to survive and have you know make a living but we had to make very tough decisions because there's no way I can sustain paying them and there's no business coming in so first of all we had to do away with the catering team all of it uh, because that is part of my business that closed down completely there was no savaging that they're, they're, like she said there are no chamas happening there, there are no events basically taking place so it was almost impossible to sustain having the team there. So that team mm. had to go. Uh, for the spices, uh, we got hit very What was the discussion the like, if you don't mind, if I can ask, what was uh, the discussion like with the team members? Fortunately, because it's not something that I'm the only person suffering. It's, it's a global pandemic that is happening. They also understood my position. I had to sit them down and just discuss with them that, Honestly, there's no way I can sustain paying you guys. And you know, we don't even have a definite date as to when this thing is going to be um, curbed. Because if we had like a timeline and say, oh, let, let me just pay you a little bit up to, let's say, uh, September or let's say August, that would have worked. But since we are working with uncertainty, there was no way I could sustain keeping them around because I didn't know for how long it's, this is going to last. Nobody knows. So they understood and uh, since nobody else is hiring, I'm not here panicking and wondering, did they go looking for jobs elsewhere? <laughs> so I, I feel bad for them. I'm trying to do what I can. So probably once every two weeks, I send them something just for their families and all that. 
for mm. that goodwill. I mean, these are people mm. that have worked for me for such a long period. These are people that have helped me get where I am. So there's no mm-hmm. way I'm just going to discard and uh, you know not care about their their livelihood. Yeah. So I do try every fortnight. I send them something just you know for food and all that. But wow. I was so glad they understood my position. If I could, mm. I would have kept them around. But since we do not know how long this is gonna be. I also cannot keep uh, bleeding. I cannot keep losing money paying them that's because right. I cannot right. sustain that too. Yeah. But for the spices, it's it's been quite a journey for me. One business got, you know, completely gone. That is Getarin. Uh, spices, um, we got hit the first couple of weeks because uh, of our, yeah. our distribution channel where we have suppliers delivering and having the contact with the clients. So when people got panicky and they didn't want any outside interaction with other people, the suppliers weren't able to sell. And you see, it's, it's a domino effect. If the suppliers are selling, then they're buying from me. If they're not selling, then I'm also not selling. But mm-hmm. like, um, I, I think Raina said, now people are a bit relaxed now and they, they are buying. So I think we are back in business. So my employee uh, for the spice uh, section, are now slowly fitting back in. Uh, not all of them are back in, yeah. but since we are now resuming production, though a bit slower than before, they are now coming back in. Yes. Great. Just a quick question on that, on your production line. Were there, uh, I know there are lots of guidelines now on workspaces, things like that. What's, what's that adapta- adaptation been like for you? Uh, it's, Again, I'm, I'm lucky because, like I said, it's not something I'm, I'm the only person that is suffering. It's everywhere. They also understand the, the, the benefits and the, the, the reason why they have to take precautions. So they are coming in. We have sanitizer at the gate. They have mm. to do the whole, the whole process. We are trying to keep the distance. So where, where we used to have like a couple of people in the grinding section, we only mm. have now one person at a time. Yeah. Uh, where we had people doing the, the labeling and all that in, in like a group sort of a setup. Now we have one person at every station because they, yeah. they understand the need to keep that distance. And I keep talking to them and telling them, you drive to make an income and be alive, then mm. make an income and be, uh, and be dead in a couple of days. We don't That's want right. that. So we, we right. are keeping those um, measures in place. So very quickly, um, Anne and uh, Wanjiro, I know you also have those, uh, your outlets as well. Um, what's that cost been like that um, in terms of um, your, your, your work plan? Let me just do this for one second before you answer. I'm going to mute everybody, okay? So for, uh, just hold on. Just so that we can be able to hear clearly because I, I know we're all in different spaces. Some are outside. Chichi, I'm feeling you in the, in the backyard. And I, I, there's some dogs close by to you that are that are greeting greeting us. Others are watching Baby Shark. I could hear the parent in the room with a child next to them. I could hear it. So for the sake of of all those, um, when when you're speaking is when we'll unmute you. Otherwise, everyone else will be on mute. Okay. Uh, so Anne, just tell us a little bit um, about your your experience in terms of the changes in the way that you work there. Okay. Um... First, of course, we had to make many changes, and one of them was um, the conversation went like this: we have to let go of some of you. No, no, actually, it went like this: uh, Madam, tunona kama hi maneno imeanza kukuwa mbaya, so can we come work in the farm? So it was very easy for us. So we took so when we closed down, everyone who was working in the cafe came to work at the farm. So they did not lose their jobs. But of course, you could see they are mentally unstable because mm. they, they are uncertain. Uh, they don't know what the future holds. They don't know if this uh, farm work is going to last forever or I'm going to say now after two weeks, we are done. But luckily, we still have a lot of farm work to do because we have lots of vegetables to, to supply. The demand is there. And mm. we, are, we are still keeping them. So we are blessed to have to be still keeping them. And when you reopen the cafe, only one person is operating because it's not business as usual. So the new norm is there's water and um, liquid hand wash uh, wow. soap. Then the cafe is small. So we only allow a minimum of four people. We are in the village, so it's, we, we don't have many protocols and uh, we are a small cafe, and then there's a lot of takeaway because it's chapo, it's chapati, yes. So we, we are keeping the social distance, he's putting on the mask, 
uh, yep. they are not allowing people to come in without masks and you have to keep reminding people please you have to keep social keep distancing yes put your mask on <laughs> it's quite a challenge but uh, it is working and we are doing it so Anjiro, what's the plan since we're opening this week those who have been up ahead we want to pass by what's what are we going to do when we come into your space. All right, uh, of course, with the people, initially, as everyone has said, it was hard for them. And most of them live hand to mouth, they have families, they think you're their mother, you feel so bad letting go of them, but they understood. The agreement was we shall pay you half salary in the month of March and April, which we honored. And they are also very excited to come back. I have a staff of uh, 15 people. So the plan is to have, uh, and my sitting capacity is 80, but now we'll have a seating capacity of uh, 35. We have wow. done the spacing very well. So which is also, it's manageable and it's a good number. Uh, the staff we agreed they'll be coming in shift. So two weeks we'll have uh, half of them. That's let's say seven or six. Then after two weeks, we have another lot. That's spread out from the kitchen to the, the staff who serve at the front to the cleaners. And uh, this also is part of, you know, the two weeks isolation, so that in case one person is infected, you know, this is the only lot affected. So it's a, mm. it's an, it's a new thing that people can try and adapt. You space the people mm. in the two weeks, two weeks. Then, of mm -hmm. course, we did the inspection. All our guys went for testing. Uh, that's uh, last week, but yeah, last week they were tested. Mm -hmm. The results came. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, they were all positive. And this testing will be happening. Negative, negative, negative. <laughs> it was negative, yes. <laughs> so it will be happening every two weeks. Um, and also they came and inspected the space. They gave us a, a letter, so we are good to go. And of course, uh, sanitizing, like uh, on Monday, we'll be doing a lot of training on how we'll be handling from the people coming in, the temperature, the sanitizing, then the table cleanup immediately, people are out. And even when the other people are coming to sit, because sometimes people want to see you're doing it. So even when guests come in to sit, you can make sure you sanitize. Of course, mm. you are told no self-service, don't do a buffet. So it's always uh, service yeah. at the table. Yeah. Uh, so we are really excited and we hope uh, everyone will maintain everything that is in for, for us to all be safe. That's from the people who are coming to eat wow. there, the staff, we need to be mm. very tough on them. And uh, also where they live, we also educate them on how to also stay safe at home. These are some yeah. of the people who come from, and uh, no pun intended, because sometimes when you mention where people come from, people take it harshly, but you find people, these people even where they live, they have to board matatus. They That's live right. in a bit congested areas, Kawangware, right. Kibera and all that. So you just also talk to them on taking care of themselves while out mm. there. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it's quite something to, to, to manage. I'm interested to know, Patrick, from your perspective, and this one is more of a, a personal question that I'm asking and, and someone else can chime in later. But Patrick, what have you had to let go of as the entrepreneur, as the business owner? There are some things personally we've had to let go of during this time. What, what's your experience been like? Uh, okay, uh, you can hear me? Okay, um, apart from the food photography and product, uh, I own a bakery together with my wife. Uh, so we had to let go of so many people uh, because we used to work with like a staff of 10 people. We had to let go of seven of them because it was really bad at, on, at the onset, but now things are really picked up. Yeah. Okay, apart from that, your question, to answer your question directly, uh, personally, I think letting go of, uh, in my business, uh, equipment. I think as a photographer, you have to keep buying more equipment and all. But now when you see projects cancelled and all, you just have to work with what you have. So you just utilize what you have. You know, this year I'm not buying anything else. If it works, it works. Maybe that's what I can say. <laughs> I'm telling, I know, I know. Um, yeah, I, I used to run a business uh, in, in production and that, that's one of the things you're always looking at the next new camera, the next new laptop, all those things, I get you. I feel you, uh, not a time to be spending so much like that. Reina, what, what have you had to let go of during this period of time, even, even personally as from your business side? You have to unmute your, your, your mic first, Reina. Okay. 
Um, I'm saying you asked um, whether Patrick and I have worked before together. And we have so many times. One of the things I've had to let go is the beauty of collaboration. And <laughs> now you can't, um, especially for food content creators, collaboration is key. Most of us had ideas on things we want to do with various food content creators. All of that has had to come at a halt because even transport cost in itself is expensive. Mm. The thought of coming from wherever you are to wherever your maybe your fellow food is at is crazy. And then the whole thing about um, curfews. So, you know, when you're shooting, it takes time. It takes time to prepare a meal, it takes time to find the right angle. Um, all of that in itself takes time. So when you have to think about preparing for that and then being back to wherever you live before seven. So you've, we've, we've also had to plan, let go of collaboration in itself I'm telling yeah. you and I, i've noticed it even at our workplace then all the night owls they they're really struggling because um like our fin finance direct finance uh, chief is he he starts work at like 4 p.m. that's when his energy gets up so he's now being forced to be inside the house during those times and it doesn't work huh? so yeah i feel you in that way chichi I, i'm i'm interested to know um what do you do financially from a business perspective to survive this when suddenly your revenue streams are just cut what have <laughs> had, what have what kind of strategies have you taken up financially uh, to keep this business moving uh, even well, just that, to keep alive and let me tell you it's been tough because um uh, i had shared with a different group of people that uh, what i had not done is uh, given myself a safety net and uh, my business is small and really what comes in gets used and there was an assumption that uh, it's going to keep on coming in because uh, it, there, there are a few streams you know if it's not the accommodation then I have the events and then there's the food and so from those three there's always something small that will come and, and it will keep you afloat. And if this month is not good, then you know the next month there's something coming. But when every single thing is touched from accommodation, events, food, you never expected that. So it, it got bad. I mean, it got to a point you're calling relatives in the name of, hi, mom, <laughs> you mm -hmm. yeah. know. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and really, you're, you're beginning to wonder after the end of the month, I remember at the end of uh, March, I said, when I pay my people and I pay my bills, I'm finished. I, I really did not know how I was going to uh, survive. So that, that, that was tough. What was your question again? <laughs> <laughs> and no, that's that's it. I was just saying, what are, what are the financial um, choices you've had to make during this period of time, and what what you've been doing? What are the strategies you've been using to to manage? And you kind of mentioned I've, some of them. Yes, so I've had to let go of of, of people. Uh, definitely cut down my expenses. Uh, I, I thought I was already living on a budget. Now I know what a budget is, you know. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and uh, mm -hmm. you completely uh, see what's totally essential, and uh, right. and now and now that the, the business morphed more, now I'm concentrating on the cooking, which is the home cooked with Chichi Sei. Then you you focus on putting any little thing you get into that business to grow it a little bit because you know everything else is quiet. So I need mm. to put anything I get in there and see how I can get a bit more. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. So there's a bit of a pivot, definitely towards any anything that will bring in that cash flow that's going on. So definitely. Lorna, let, let me just have a, a chat with you, Lorna, as well, because I know um, you you share a lot about yourself online. You you share about your experience and your own life. Um, what what kind of things have you been telling other entrepreneurs to keep their their spirits up? and to help make sure that they're not giving, giving up during times like this. All right. Um, I, I think personally, I have had two strategies to ride the wave. I'm a very strong believer of riding the wave as opposed to getting swept and dying in there. There's always a silver lining. If you, if you just take a moment and just see things a bit differently, you'll be surprised to know the actually opportunities even within the storm. So my strategy number one, immediately everyone went home 
I, I asked myself, okay, we are not doing contact, so the spices are out. We are not doing catering because there are no gatherings. What is it that I can do to still utilize my skill? Remember, it's, it's mm. a business and the buildings that have closed down, your skill is still there. You still have the skill in you. So how do you utilize that skill to still make you money without the structures that you had in place, like the building, like the contact and all that? So the first thing I did was ask myself, how can I still utilize my skill and still get to everyone while they are home? I realized that a lot of people, now that they are home, they're going to be cooking more often. A lot of people work in offices where they leave in the morning, come back in the evening, so they probably just do dinner. They cook one time a day. But now that they are home and they're all working, the chances of them cooking like three, four, five times within a day increase exponentially at this point. So how can I come in and how can I help with that? That is the, the, the first idea I had was to do the breakfast book because I knew a lot of people really between mandazi and bread, they, they don't have much in between. That's so yeah so <laughs> i i did the breakfast book and i am proud to say i sold six thousand pre-orders before the book was out six thousand wow. copies before the book was out and the pre-orders were 100 shillings per book stop wow. being the math so <laughs> that wow. was already a step number one so i mm -hmm. saw an opportunity within the first couple of weeks of people being at home and it paid off so what you can do right now is take a take a breath Calm down. I know everything is bad, but like mm. I said, you still have the skill in you. Mm. How else can you still utilize your skill to make money? If you focus on that question, chances are you'll find a way. If you're into catering, can you start packaging food? Can you start distributing in your area? Can you start mm. now finally branding your packaging and selling across the country? You understand? There are different ways you can just shift your thought process to still make money using your skill, but not in the way you've been doing for a couple of years. Strategy number two for me is to prepare for when things resume. I'm putting structures in place in terms of mental preparation, skill acquiring, um, structures that I did not have time or maybe the thought of putting them in place. I'm doing them right now. I'm learning things mm -hmm. like um, video editing. I'm learning how to um, you know, take photos. I'm getting skills online because I got the time now, I have the time. So by the time we are tell, we, we're being told that Corona is now uh, manageable and we are getting back to work, I'll be way better than I was going in in the storm. So people mm -hmm. can do that, either shift and still make money right now or take time and finally get a skill that's gonna make you better when things resume. Mm -hmm. So And I'm doing good. I'm, yeah. I mean, that's that's exactly the, the attitude I think, I think I've seen from so many entrepreneurs who've been dealing with, especially as you've been going through this series of webinars. Um, there's a sense in which, and I think that's there's a special gene for entrepreneurs. There's a gene of never give up, of find the solution. And, and I, I, I admire all of you. And, and there's a sense in which there's a, I'll never be beaten in this. So I wanted to ask Anne, if you don't mind, Anne, just tell us a little bit in terms of um, some of the strategies, I know you, because you're in the, the, the production, not just in product, the farming side, uh, you're also now beginning to deal with logistics of movement and things like that. What, what have you done in terms of strategies internally to make sure that the business keeps moving as well? Sure. Thank you. Um, our farming business has not really been affected by the COVID. And uh, it, there was a joke the other day, uh, where my friends are saying, as long as you're a farmer, you have something to eat because there's always something to sell and guys have to eat whether there's Corona or not. That's right. And um, like I said, I had, uh, I shifted the guys who used to go to the cafe, uh, come home. One thing I had to lose is that I had to lose training because I do uh, physical training for guys who are potential farmers who are interested in doing strawberry, organic strawberry mm, farming. Mm. So one thing I had to lose is the training, but we are resuming from next month I, using the ministry, social distancing, safety, everything. Okay. Um, what our new strategy, because we were expanding. When it started, we were expanding. We have expanded. We have uh, we started from 100 seedlings, we went to 700, now we are over 5,000 strawberry seedlings. And uh, now we are looking at how do we market? So just like Lona has said, I am using, I have learned so many skills on how to do marketing on social media. And being a uh, Centonomy alumni of uh, 
central uh, centonomy entrepreneurship and so many almost every program in centonomy i have learned so much about social media marketing i have been uh, learning in depth on how to create posters everything you know on detail mm. because i have the time so we are mm. we are going to do that and then we have we are lucky because we had a, we have a logistics firm so we are looking at doorstep delivery for our fruits and now we were thinking if we had fruits when corona started we would have had a big challenge of um, the fruits going bad so what are we thinking now value addition what can we do with our fruits wow. when wow. we they are, uh, okay we have a few months to go, we have like three months to go before the fruiting season but you're already looking at value addition we have started speaking to kirdi to do training i was to do an um, a course at strathmore that was a value addition course uh, it was a th- three parts two parts and um, i think strathmore have not reached i think they stopped or something so i was waiting for that program so you have just like lona said you have to uh, learn a skill whichever skill whichever industry mm-hmm. you are you have to you have to you cannot give up and uh, and then we were also because we sell vegetables to uh, to people and also to companies who also supply to other i think what do i say we supply to companies who sell directly to customers they want more so we are doing more of the vegetables more of the cucumber more of the radish more of the broccoli so we have also seen an opportunity and just like lona said the other day there was a, a row at the at the border tanzania kenya border and that is a chance for guys who are farmers to see an opportunity because things uh, food like uh, onions uh, uh, ginger food like oranges are not getting to the market it means that those are opportunities for us to uh jump in and plant them it means the demand is there so in every storm like lona said there's an opportunity yeah. and this is yeah. our time this is our time to spot those opportunities yes so those are strategy value addition to produce more to use logistics yeah. and to use social media i mean market. guys the, the stories i'm sure that were, that are coming out of this are so many i wanted just to paint the picture for us um and i really appreciate it if you don't mind and i've got my little the picture so that i've been for you and then now we have a chance now to hear from um those who have come to participate in the webinar i've been seeing lots of questions coming through so i hope um my wonderful panelists you're ready for them because uh, some of them are hard hitting uh but let me start with an easy one just so that you can ease into it uh daniel uh, says that the presenters all have unique names i don't know I, i i didn't notice that but he has appreciated all your wonderful names um there's a question for you uh patrick which was um can you use your photography for something else other than just food that's angela asking you uh, are you able to do photography for other things hello Yes, uh I do a lot of product photography as well. Uh beauty products, uh even packaged products as well. So yes, I'm yeah. able to do it. Wonderful. Wajiro, you're being asked, how do you handle landlords? <laughs> Rent being a major overhead. What are we doing? How how are you surviving? All right. Uh for as uh, for for Empire it has uh, it's a challenge uh, rent uh, being in Upper Hill is of course very high. We are housed at uh, Zepri place. It's uh, next to Coca-Cola. Uh so what we had to do is negotiate a bit with our landlord. They were a bit uh, fair to say so, but we had we also, of course we had even an area before. So they gave us a waiver for uh, three months. but there are conditions tied to it you have also to clear what was pending previously so you have to now see how you get some money to sort that rent out why that are we together yes we are we're still here yes okay okay i thought you disappeared so um so we had to negotiate and they gave us a waiver from april may and june so june is our last but we have to pay the service charge of course So it's just the rent but the service charge has to be paid. 
which is also a big uh, chunk of money, especially if you're, if you're, if you're not in operation. Yeah. Because security has to be there. There's okay. cleanliness. Uh, of course, power. We have we left some of our fridges on and all that. So what I will say is try and negotiate. There are landlords who are okay, but make sure also you keep your beginning power. And remember, they, are, they also need that money. So as much as you want them to understand you, you also have to understand them. So maintain your side of bargain as you expect them to also uh, be a bit... Uh, uh, be a bit understanding to your end. All right. Maybe Chichi and Lona, you can jump in on this one. Uh, this is a beautiful question from Ida. You know, in production industry, you need to have strong relationships with your suppliers. So how have you handled it? And since you, you have uh, reduced your daily purchases to a minimum quantity, what's, what's the relationship been like between you and the people who used to get your wonderful supplies from? Uh, maybe Chichi, go first, and then Lona, you can tell us a little bit. So I, I think maybe Lona might be a bit more um, suited okay, to this no. question because remember my supplies would be in a different way. So uh -huh. I coming into the food industry, this is new. I am now making new connections with new suppliers. So for me, it's all new. I have new suppliers. Uh, I'm, I'm learning where to get this who to do that with, and they were not previously there because uh, the food um, uh, part of the business for me was not an everyday thing. Now mm -hmm. that it is, is when I'm beginning to have to develop relationship with suppliers. No problem, Lorna, go yeah. ahead. What's, what's the experience been like? Uh, for me, it's been actually good. Uh, like uh, what Wanjiro has said, remember these people are also in business and they're also affected. So they are even happier that you're still ordering from them. Even if you're, you're not paying upfront, they are happy that you're ordering because you will pay. And the beauty about relationships is this person has walked the journey with you. They know you pay promptly and they also know you're suffering right now. You have so much going on also. So if you stop buying, they're also not selling. So they're even happy that you're even ordering from them. Even if you're going to pay later, they know that's money in the bank for them. <laughs> so I'm, I'm actually uh, in a very beautiful place where they're the ones pushing the products. <laughs> they're like, you just take, <laughs> just take yeah. a few weeks to pay a month or two down the line. Because even if I, I stay with my product in the warehouse, I'm not making money from it. So yeah, relationships are coming to play right now because uh, you get someone like your printer, even if you pay half, they are lucky to take that money as opposed to having uh, the machines there that are not functioning and they still That's have right. the bills coming in. They still have to pay the rent for their shops. So good relationships, of course, are a beautiful thing to have. Uh, so work on having them. They're part of the structures we learned in Centronomy and uh, they are coming in handy for me, I must say. I must say right now, even the workers, you, they are able to work without being paid because they know that's money they've earned, even if it's not coming in daily, like they used to, even if you tell them because of this and this that is happening, there is delay. We don't have as much cash flow, um, you know, like before. So can you can I can I pay you two weeks down the line? Can I pay you at the end of the month? And they're happy to take it. And one of the most beautiful things that are going to happen at the end of this um, storm is that we will have a lot of cheap, good labor. I, I know it sounds bad. It sounds bad, but there are going to be a lot of people with very good skills that mm -hmm. are jobless and uh, if a company is looking to restructure or hire professionals this would be the mm. time to do that this yeah. would be the time to do that look you have to you have to make the most of each situation so Absolutely. i get you um i just yeah i'll come to you Anjira, in just a second reina i wanted to ask you because there's a lot of work going into your presentation and your um essentially now all that people see of, of your business is a digital footprint. You are not out on the street and you're a big part of that. So I, I was coming at it from that perspective and wondering, do, your job should be, you and, and Patrick should be without a break at this point because the amount of digital content that we are putting out mm. is over and above. Um. I'd say from, okay, the food stylist bit of it was the one part that I have been affected, but I'm also a recipe developer. And there I can comfortably say we have been having a lot of fun uh, creating recipes because people are consuming. People now, everybody wants to cook, everybody wants to bake. Um, people are tired of eating the same things in your pantry. So um, like for me, 
I have a lot of fun every Friday on my favorite foodie Friday, just talking about different recipes and recommending stuff people can try out so that it makes it more effective and fun for people in the kitchen. Because now we wake up, we eat, we clip, we eat again. It's the same thing over and over again. So um, we are not, we are still busy, but you see that is creating content for other people. Um, for me, if there's something I'm trying to also learn to balance is to also do stuff for myself, to create for myself, to somewhat um, uh, like even attend more webinars on food styling or food photography or developing recipes or food writing, all that kind of stuff. So that at the end of the day, I'm not just creating content for others, but I'm also creating stuff for my own personal growth. So I love that, that idea that you're building your skills. I think everyone across the board here, one of the things that you have gotten an, an extra dose of over probably the last couple of weeks is time. And, and so even the time that you'd have been spending in traffic, those four hours in a day, suddenly you have them when you're seated at home. So uh, I, I love that idea that you're building on yourself. I think, Wanjiro, you were talking about uh, something. Uh, no, I, yeah, I wanted to, to add on. Okay, I wanted to add on what uh, Lona was saying about um, you have suppliers who you, of course, like myself also, they are suppliers who close with their money because they were expecting payments and you have contracts. Maybe you pay them at the end of the month, at the end of the two weeks. But I need people to understand this is the, actually the time you realize you need to build a good relationship with them for them to continue supplying you, to continue understanding you. So you have to talk to them and negotiate. In my case, if I'm reopening, of course, uh, I, maybe some people also, some suppliers are like, we can't supply to hotels now because we know they are doing badly. But others are willing to have a relationship with you. And maybe they will say, let me supply you even, let's say it's meat, I'll supply you meat for two days. Then on the third day, make sure you pay me. So we really need to maintain in this industry, we need to build that relationship. We need to help each other at least survive in this storm because either it's a supplier of ice cream, water, alcohol, meat, vegetable, mm -hmm. everyone needs that small business. So That's let's right. support each other but keep communicating, build that relationship. If things are bad, let them know. Same to our landlords. If mm -hmm. things are very bad, always let them know and, and uh, so that they, they are able also to manage expectations from their end. No, I, I hear you completely. And in, in fact, if you look at, at some of the responses that are coming through, I'm, and I'll, I'm going through the questions. So uh, everyone who's in the room, just keep typing and I'll... I'll get to your questions and I'm trying to also consolidate some of them so that we get a good response across the board. But that idea of negotiating is so important. Don't leave a... anything we can't recognize and, um, and borrowing has changed. And so rather than running away from your debts, go and address them. Go and actually say, hey, this is where we are. What can we be able to do? Um, so there's some questions that are coming in. And there's Rita Waweru. She is a, a strawberry farmer. She has so many questions for you. I'm just going to give you two. Because uh, other, she needs to find you and you need to meet and talk about strawberry farming. But yes. she has just said, um, uh, just give one or two tips on the organic farming side. And then what do you do with birds? Uh, apparently, there are many on her farm. So what are you <laughs> doing to stop the birds from eating all your strawberries? OK. Thank you. Thank you, Rita. So about the birds, you need to have a bird net. OK, there's a shed net and there's a bird net. So you need to cover the birds from the side and from the top. So if, I am assuming I'm assuming that she, she has uh, planted the strawberries on open field, so she needs to use a bird net cover on top and on the side. One tip about the organic farming is you just have to use manure, cow manure, chicken manure, depending on what you're planting. And we do training on this. So just reach me on the number that I have uh, written on the chat, then I can give you many tips. Oh, good, excellent.
Okay. Is, it, is someone here? This is Philo. And Philo is saying, um, a chef at JKIA, um, they've been hit extremely hard. They're on unpaid leave. What can they do at a time like this? What advice would you guys give uh, Philo at a time like this? A anyone with, with some, I know since we asked, yeah, go ahead, Chichi. Um, am I, okay, you can hear me? Yeah. So Philo, you say the name is Philo. Yeah. Um, I'm not even a chef, but I'm someone who's passionate about cooking. I love cooking. And so I would cook for events uh, here at um, my property where I run the business and I'd cook for friends. And when everything came to a standstill, what came to my mind was the fact that I can cook and people are still eating. Whether there's corona or not, we're eating. And the fact that um, a lot of mothers or a lot of women are doing more cooking than they care for. You know, there's an assumption that because you're a woman, you can cook, you can cook well, or it comes naturally to you and that you like it. It's, it's not true. There are very many women who don't like cooking and who don't cook well. And so for me, I took what I do well, and I'm assuming for Philo, because you're a chef, you do it well, you take it and you turn it into a business. I am running my kitchen. It's from my very own kitchen, from my very own home. There are challenges about that, but then I took what I can do began it in my kitchen, began small, you know, and I see this potential, but right now I'm still very small. And so I am cooking and supplying food to homes. And there are so many, in fact, as we're speaking, because today I supply um, lunches over the weekend, it's lunches and in the eve, uh, on the weekdays, it's dinners. And I'm just getting messages from some of my clients saying, thank you so much for lunch. This is delicious, what not and the rest. So you will find people who are like, I just need someone to do my family lunch. I just need to do family dinner dinners and e even if they might be happy to cook and say this is great we can do more family cooking trust me some people would be like I am so glad to know on Thursday night and Saturday and Sunday afternoon uh, lunch will be coming in and it's home cooked or it's very much has a, a personal touch to it so mm -hmm. Philo you can cook from where you are possibly I, I don't know yeah 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 uh, and, and here's the thing. I think we must begin to think differently about our skill set and mm -hmm. what are the opportunities with our skill set. So yes. uh, one of the stories that I usually, I, I usually share is that when, when um, I, I essentially took Centronomy 101 um, about eight years ago with my, with my wife, uh, we had just gotten married and so we were trying to get our lives together. So one thing that we are told to do, and it's, it's useful not just for individuals, but even for businesses, will simply track your expenses. Know where your money is going so that you can make decisions about it. And mm -hmm. uh, during that time, we, uh, this is the story I always tell people, we found we were spending more on takeout food than our rent in a month. And, and it was, um, I mean, it was just one of those things that you <laughs> was mind blowing. Wow. Like, what, is, what is that? No, none of you should be saying, wow, we are your customers. <laughs> That's good. Anyway, no. anyway. <laughs> so uh, we actually did the calculation. We found it was actually cheaper to hire a chef to come and cook food for us here so that we have that variety on a weekly basis than it was to be spending the way we were spending when we when we were going out. So I don't know. I'm just responding to what Philo is saying. Um, in as much as you guys are doing an excellent job, I'm really enjoying um, Rena and, and Lorna's idea as, around um, the the recipes and stuff, but you know, some of us just are lazy. We don't want to cook. So Philo, I'm, I don't know, maybe there are some families that are looking for opportunities, for, you know, for a different uh, experience. Can that be one of the areas you can use your skills? So all these things, it's a journey of discovery that we are going through now. And, and the truth of the matter is nobody has the final answer, but what we're doing is trying to discover. And I think as entrepreneurs, that is our journey. As entrepreneurs, it is our journey of discovery. What, what opportunity is out there? How do we maximize that opportunity? And then how do we move um, beyond that into profitability over time? So a couple more questions just coming through. Um, Wanjiro, there was one from Daniel who was asking, uh, he's excited that you're open. You'll be coming for something, I'm sure. But he was saying, um, does that mean that you're required to close? Those who are going to open, uh, Anna and Wanjiro, are you required to close by 4 p.m. or can he enjoy his task until 6.58 p.m.? You know, this, 
so uh, no of course we have to close by 4 p.m latest by 4 30 because you have okay. to also give our staff time enough time to get home before 7 p.m curfew yeah. so unfortunately you can't enjoy your tasker until 6 30 you either you come and the rule is you have to enjoy a, a drink accompanied by food People are saying, some people are asking for two motahikagues and a beer. <laughs> <laughs> so come, come for your task earlier on, eh? like uh, an afternoon cold beer. But yeah. uh, later than that, it's not possible. We have to stick to that regulation. And they, they are very strict. They are doing a lot of patrolling around. So we have to, we have been given a chance. So let's adhere to the rules. Let's not behave abnormally. Uh, respond quickly to the next one. <laughs> Before you go, Wajiro, what platforms do people use to hire waiters, waitresses, and chefs? Where, where can we go? And I know, Lona, you have some experience there as well. Anne, I know you do. So where can we find these? Lona, you are the one saying they're skilled people. Where do we find them? <laughs> so uh, you, you have... Uh -huh. Okay, well, let's let Wajiro take this one. Oh, okay. I think uh, it depends. You have to reach out to the different organization. If you're hiring, of course, we will check. You check from our social media platforms from our website. You have to drop your CV. Uh, so, uh, but, but there is no one space that where people go to. You have to reach out to the different organization. Lona, you can go. Do you have a different um, perspective, Lona? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Um, mostly I like to go by recommendations. So you get one person that is good at what they do. Chances are birds of a feather flock together. So if you get a very hardworking person, chances are the friend is also very hardworking. <laughs> Actually, it's because very true. Yes, I agree. It is. <laughs> <laughs> they even recommend so, each other. Yes, yes. If you get a lazy person, chances are the friends are also very lazy. So <laughs> you, you, you just handpick the hardworking ones and you ask them to recommend people they know that work hard too. <laughs> I, think, yeah. I think I know where that comes from. It's usually, where, when you join, don't make me look bad. That's usually what you're being Absolutely. told. Absolutely. <laughs> so... All right, so here's a couple more. Um, uh, here's somebody, Jerry, saying, yeah, she's selling cooked, cooked, cooked meals from her kitchen, uh, finding it exciting, and, and I'm sure she's got some of the things that have been given there as well. So, I mean, there's lots that can be done. Um, <clears throat> uh, I know, especially maybe, Chichi, you can jump in on this, Anne, as well. The, this question is... Um, are there government requirements for home bakers or home chefs? You know, I I I would say at this time of oh, I hope I'm not getting myself into trouble. <laughs> yes, choose your words carefully. <laughs> I better choose my words. But let me just be you know um, honest and open with the person out there who is not necessarily dealing with a business or an organization that's as large as, you know, an establishment in, in Upper Hill, a restaurant, um, you know, and other businesses that were up and running uh, in, a, in a big way. Um, for those who are doing it small time, I think because of the situation that we have right now with Corona, a lot of things can fly under the radar. But I'm sure because uh, the food industry I am beginning to learn now has a lot of potential and there's a lot of money in it. And of course, once you begin to make a lot of money, then it's important to make sure that you will go by all the regulations so that you don't have carry knocking on your door. But when I'm making, you know, five, 10, um, 15, 30 meals uh, in a day for different people, different families, then um, I would say at this point, I have not had um, any, anyone knock on my door. And I would say, because at this point, I'm still supplying a lot of people who would say they know me uh, as a friend or they know me personally, um, then, then so far, so good. It's been, it's been quiet in terms of regulations. I would say what I know I need to do, because uh, Waidaka, are you there? I seem to have lost you. No, I'm still here. I'm still here. You okay. can hear me. Yes, I can. Um, what I know I need to do personally, because uh, I, I am concerned about Corona. I'm concerned for my own health. I'm concerned mm. for the health of, of the people in, in my own home. Yeah. And uh, therefore, I, I, I have to ensure that we are 
washing our hands, we are sanitizing. I am the chef, so I'm the one who's cooking the meals, but I don't work alone. I will work with um, my house help who will be cleaning mm. and chopping and doing things like that. So it's as soon as we're in the kitchen, as soon as we go out, we have to come back, wash our hands. I deal with riders, a lot of riders, because my food will go out, you know, people will will, will order for it um, and, and we deliver it. And uh, the riders are not my riders. I don't train them. They are, uh, you know, I will get them from Uber or Safe Boda. And so I have to wear my mask. I have to ensure they wear their mask. Mm-hmm. There's a rider that I used to work with at the beginning and I got him a mask. And I said, you have to wear this and you have to talk to your client wearing this. You don't take it out to, to wear it. Mm-hmm. So things like wearing our masks, ensuring that our hands are constantly being washed because, we, okay, you know, we don't know the, this, the corona, this virus. The, the I don't want it to come from my kitchen. Sorry? Sorry, it was someone switched on their mic. Just, just oh, okay, okay. And and so so those are the things that we have to do on our side because it would be terrible for someone to get food from my end and get sick. Not only just with corona, but you know even just a running stomach. Yeah. You know yeah, that's yeah, that's not yeah. what you want. I take pride that my food tastes good and it's clean and it's you know uh, because of the sanitary conditions that I will mm. ensure uh, are happening in my own home. That's mm-hmm. right. And, and so Patrick, I, I think one of the things that's come up that I'm seeing quite a bit is the issue, and even um, Chichi has just mentioned it right now, the issue of dealing with um, partners within, within your business. And the question is, um, how do you deal with people that you, that, you, that you don't normally work with? I'm sure you said you have a bakery, so how are you getting your stuff out and going in the right time? What, what are the new relationships you've had to build during this period? Okay. Um, formerly, uh, before Corona, we had a we had a bike. We have a bike, so we have a rider and uh, someone who carries the cake. And now, post Corona, we had to just park the bike. Then there's one Uber guy who is close to the bakery who we now use. So he just does the estimates, and then he delivers the cakes on our behalf. And then. Uh, of course, he adheres to all the regulations and he's never smudged the cakes and we appreciate that so much. But we feel bad we had to let go of our rider and the guy who used to carry, but it's just adapting to the situation right now. Mm-hmm. That's right. So Reina, oh, I, have, uh, I, yes, I, I yes. would like to say one other thing that, because I, I did get this question um, from, from from clients and they would say, what would you, what, what do you do to ensure that uh, your containers are clean? And mm. on my side, it means I spend more money on packaging. And so I will get uh, containers that definitely close well. And then on top of that, I will cling wrap every single thing, you know, over and over to ensure that it is now for the client when they receive the yeah. food, you know, you, you're literally peeling or cutting through the cling wrap and you know that the, the, the container was handled by me, the chef, you know, or the other person working with me in the kitchen and not the rider. And That's so right. you don't just put the container in a, in a bag, it is cling wrapped, you know, and, and that kind of thing. So that someone feels when they get the food that w- before I get to the food, the container itself is clean because it's coming from my kitchen and I am the one handling it. I've handled your food. If you trust me to cook for you, then I'm sure you trust me to handle the container that your food goes into. But when it comes to a rider, then people get very iffy about it. And so that idea of cling wrapping your containers um, so that the client does not feel, even if the rider handled the container for whatever reason, he shouldn't, it's in a bag. But if he handled it, you know, they still feel there's a, a level of cleanliness with, with, your, with your product, with your food. Uh, yes, I wanted oh, to yes. add something but... on on the delivery because we have a logistics firm, Zodo Logistics, and I know it could be an issue with the riders because most of them, of course, do not come from uh, good settings. And um, as as logistics, uh, Zodo Logistics, we have to make sure that the rider is clean. So there is an inspection in the morning. You're physically clean. The the bike is clean, and every time. Before you handle a customer, you have to sanitize. You have to, if before and after, so so that you do not have, uh, and then you do not also uh, handle money, so that the money is sent on on pesa, so that you maintain a, a hygiene to the highest standard. Yeah. Mm. 
So believe me, in the food industry, you're not the only ones with logistical issues, as you could see in just a few seconds. That's our experience. Now that we've moved up online, um, one of the main issues that you face is number one, trying to make sure everyone's mic is off, but also staying online. So um, we started off doing these classes and we thought it's possible for one person to think, uh, but we realized what happens if you go offline and that's, that's why we had Ruby on and we have a couple of other people in the room. So there's small shifts that you have to make in your businesses uh, to help you grow beyond that point. Now, um, just before I, I, I got lost along the way, I was, I was, I was speaking to Reina as well, even from her yeah. perspective on um, building new client relationships. Because I think one of the things as entrepreneurs is you can't sit back and say, this is what it has been. This is what it will continue to be. Uh, that's it. Otherwise you're... Hi, Baka. Business board, new business relationships, new opportunities that are coming up. What's your, what's your perspective on that? I think we lost you like for a second. I didn't hear the last part. Did I come back? Uh, let me try one more time. One more time. I was saying, okay. what mm -hmm. are the new business relationships you're, you're building right now? Because we can't stay stagnant. We have to grow. Uh -huh. So, what are, so yeah. what are you doing to grow your business opportunity? I think one of the things that I have found myself trying to do a little more often is talking about um, projects that I have worked on before because people believe by seeing. So someone will recommend you because they somewhat saw what you've done for someone else with a similar business. So this is the time where we brag and we have the time to package what we have done before properly and talk about it a little bit more. Yeah. Um, which is also the getting a chance to ask even for your previous clients to give you testimonials on their experience and what you can improve on so that now your previous clients help to build trust with your new clients. Um, otherwise, we are all pitching and writing emails and, and also trying to go back to thanking the clients that you've had before. Hopefully, when you resume, we are back at the game, all of us together. I hope someone wrote down what you just said, Reina, because if you have noticed, businesses are reaching out to their customers a lot more. Yeah. Let me give you a small example. Uh, on Saturdays at times like this, we are generally not busy. My work would have finished. But because we're in such uncertain times that things have shifted so much, as Centronomy, we're working hard to make sure we are keeping the relationship moving. So yeah. we, we're doing as many webinars as possible, making sure you've heard about us, you're hearing, you're hearing, you're hearing. This is not just a, a random session that we decided out of the goodness of our hearts to put together. <laughs> we are trying to stay alive. <laughs> so even I, I, want, I want to hear from the rest of the, the panel as well. What, what are the stay alive, uh, uh, I guess, initiatives that you're putting into your business? Um, Lorna, we've not heard from you for a while. What are the new stay alive initiatives that you're, that you're putting in? Uh, I've been trying to create uh, new content. I'm trying to get into spaces that uh, initially I wasn't very much interested in. And uh, I, I must say I'm quite excited about uh, the shift that is happening right now in the in the whole world. Because some of the giants that were in the market and the, the small businesses felt like they cannot compete with have actually been exposed. They have structures that were put years and years ago. And right now they have no idea on how to adapt uh, to online and different um, strategies that need to be in place right now for businesses to survive. So I, I feel very excited mm -hmm. to know that small businesses now have a chance to come in and compete with the giants. Look at Facebook and TikTok. Look at you. Look at what's happening with uh, Skype versus Zoom. You, you, you see where I'm headed with this. I instead of looking at this like a bad thing, I'm actually excited that this is happening because now I finally get a chance to showcase what I can do versus the corporates that have been there and they've not been online. 
because they didn't they didn't think that was quite a space they were interested in because things have been working for them for so many years and yet people like us who started online and trying to climb the ladder slowly are now the ones getting to our people more so we are getting some somewhat an equal platform to compete so if you're a small business they are feeling like um I cannot compete with the, the the big boys in the in the industry. This is your chance to showcase what you've been doing. You might have a smaller following, but it's it's there. It's there. They, they've been walking the journey with you. They trust you. This is your chance to show them different things. Come up with different content. I am now beginning to get into TikTok. I'm now serious with my YouTube channel because these are avenues I can make money while still at home. You understand as opposed right. to other other people that feel like oh because we we have this restaurant or we have this product we don't need to go online we don't have to compete online now they're feeling the heat they are feeling the heat and now they're trying to come online which gives me the leverage because i've been there for five years and now they're just catching up so mm -hmm. instead of people feeling down about this corona i think they should shift their mindset to seeing it as an opportunity to do something different i'm working on new uh, new blends of spices new seasonings new sauces and testing them out trying them out so that when you're ready to get back in the business i have gotten to do things that would have taken me a couple of years to do in the process uh, you know like coming up with new content and the new spices and the seasonings i've been able to do them in the last two months because now i have time so when we get back to business as usual, I'll be like five steps ahead of where I would have been if this did not happen. So I'm, I'm choosing to look at it as a blessing. I'm wondering whether other people are seeing the same opportunities that are there. Yes, Chichi, I've seen your hand. But I, wa I want to find out from Patrick because I have a special one. For the, I'm a sweet tooth. And when I had bakery, that's why I keep coming back to you. There's, there's a very, there's my... My favorite cookies. Now, look, I have nothing against local products, but you know your 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 sense of taste knows no, you know, heritage or anything. Where the where you find a good thing, you find it. I, there's a there's a special cookie that I like and it's imported. And I just realized about two weeks ago, going into the supermarket, that the the shelves are empty of imported products, import, especially imported um, baked goods. Uh, are you noticing an opportunity in that space as well? I'm, I'm just interested to know because I'm wondering how come those, those spaces are not being filled by local cookies? Okay, uh, funny that you've asked that. Uh, okay, normally the bakery, we only deal with cakes, uh, but my wife was planning to start a cookie company here. Uh, so I think it's a big opportunity for her because as you have said, uh, this manji, what, all those biscuits and cookies, most of the most of the imports are now not coming in so there's a very big opportunity for people to just come in and package very uh i have a bakery in loresho that i shoot for they've they've been selling cookies like crazy because people are at home kids are at home so they need all that sweet stuff so i think it, there's a very big opportunity there true now you can see I'm a cookie lover. That's sugar, sugar, uh, sugar baked right next to my place over here. Ah. I know that <laughs> so you're a fan. Awesome. I am a awesome. fan. Let me tell you about it. Chichi, you're going to say something. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Just, just oh, before. Yes, yeah, finish up, Patrick. Yeah. Oh, uh, sugar baked, like sugar baked. I've been shooting for them for a while. And now since I can't go uh, physically to the location, They've been sending me the products, so I just shoot from home and now send them the pictures. So I think when we're talking about adapting, uh, even maybe photographers, people out there, they can just set up a home studio where they can be able to also do content for the, their, their clients without having to go and risk and all that. That's right, that's, okay. that's right, that's right, brilliant. Chichi, yes, you're going to say something. First, I have a question for Patrick. When they send you the product to shoot, yes. <laughs> do you get you get to eat it afterwards? Of when course, and I share with my neighbors. Exactly. <laughs> I, I have decided I, I'm changing what I'm doing. I'm changing oh what I'm doing. <laughs> now the weight becomes a problem. Yeah. Because the products, even if you share, my, my, the products are so many. They are so I delicious. Have programs. <laughs> so, um... Well, Daka, you had talked about staying alive. Yeah. And, and I just wanted to add that staying alive is an attitude. And if your attitude is right, then your mind begins to work the right way. 
when you are seated in a very defeated space, which many people felt at the beginning and many people still do because, I mean, this is completely unprecedented. You know, when we are told 21 more days of lockdown, we are like, ah, what is this? Whoa, you know, <laughs> and, and we just want everything to go back to normal. But I, I really don't think normal is going to happen very soon. And when it happens, I don't think it will be the normal we know. It's going to be a different normal. And so if you have the right attitude, then whatever is coming, because something is coming, we'll be able to surmount that difficulty. And um, I, I would say for me, staying alive, and yet I'm, I'm very small because I, I think I'm, I'm newest in this when it comes to the food industry amongst the people in the panel. This is something new I got into. It wasn't an everyday thing, and now it is. Uh, for me to be able to stay alive, I have realized how important social media is. And it's something that I really never ventured into. I, I'm just kind of like, no, me, social media, I don't do. But then, hey, you, you have to learn that you need to do different things to be able to go in a different direction. So I'm learning about social media, how to use it, how important it is. Uh, I'm, I'm learning how to take photographs of my food because I can't quite afford Patrick right now, you know? And so you, 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 I'm learning different skills even as I'm cooking, as I'm working. I'm learning how important it is to have uh, good relationships and that when my friends um, will try out um, my food, then I definitely can get them to, to speak to their friends who I can't get hold of. Um, I can't tell whether I'm still on. Am I still on? You're still there. We can hear okay. you. Okay. Okay. I just kind of disappeared from my own screen. So, um, so friends telling friends. And then also, you know, you make mistakes. And what I do when I make mistakes, instead of running away from that client or from that mistake, um, is you go back to the client and make it up. And that sometimes can be expensive. Uh, today, I had a client that I delivered extra chapatis to because last weekend, she complained that the rider was rude to her. Please note that the rider does not work for me, you know, but then mm. because it is seen as part of my business, I have done the food and the food needs to get there. And I, I booked this rider. He was rude yeah. to her. And she yeah. felt he was rude, you know, whatever. I don't really know the situation. But what I did this week, because I don't want to lose a client, is I said, I'm sending you something extra today. And so I said, I'm sending you chapatis. And she said, and at no extra cost and not no delivery cost. And she said, oh, that's wonderful. The chapatis can't come alone. May I have? And then she started ordering other things. So go mm. back. It doesn't mean all of them will order something, but go back. Uh, fix the mistake. It might be you who forgot something in a, in a delivery. I have to yeah. go back and spend the money to make sure it goes because those are things I'm learning because, uh, you know, you, you, you learn many things along the way and I'm learning how to rectify my mistakes without losing yeah. um, the, the client. So definitely, and I'm also learning that you, you can't do everything. So you begin to, when you talked about suppliers, you begin to know who the good people are, um, mm. who will supply you with this, which riders are good, which, you know, uh, people to work with for this, that, and the other. So slowly That's by right. slowly, you know, if you have the right attitude, you, you attract the right people to work with you. Very good. Reina, you wanted to add something on that. You have to, yeah, since it's here. there we go. Yes. Um, yes, we have time. But I'd say we also need to find people you can be accountable to. Mm -hmm. Because as much as you want to create something new, you're thinking about uh, how to make this, uh, like find opportunities even through COVID-19, you need to find people who will keep you accountable to your goals. So find people who you can tell what you're working on um, and they can help you. Um, work towards those goals because Netflix, uh, kids, uh, responsibilities, all these things are things that are happening right now and it can become a little bit overwhelming. So sticking to your goals, despite the fact that you have time, might be difficult. So you stay alive also by finding people who you can be accountable to and they will help you through your growth as well. Yeah. Tell me about it. That, I mean, preach. Um, and so we are, we are definitely committed to doing that. And that's part of what, what we've been discussing over the last couple of weeks um, here at Centonomy specifically, because we realize that it can't just be, you can't just be present for clients during the time that, that, 
um, that they want you to be there or that they've paid um, those kind of extra things that you're talking about, you see, those kind of extra points, those are the things that you want to do. And as I said, that's, that's part of our agenda during this season, to get out as much information as possible within as many industries as possible so that people can make decisions about their lives and what they're going to do. So uh, a lot of the things that have been discussed here, I just wanted to let you know, a part of what a program that we run here at Centonomy, it's called the Centonomy Entrepreneur. And the Centonomy Entrepreneur is um, essentially, it is a training and a group coaching mod, uh, model that we've had for the last more than five years now that is designed to help you build great businesses. And so we start off and you can hear a big part of what we're discussing is simply our mindset. It's so important that you begin to think differently as entrepreneurs, to see opportunities, to handle the, idea, the, the issues that you have in terms of fear um, and get over that. And so we spend the first three modules just dealing with our mindset, thinking about how to, to best leverage on the opportunities that are in front of us. And we even use a, a special model called design thinking to help you to get through those things. We also then follow that up with uh, a couple of models on how business is structured. So that's number one, the structure and strategy, how do they work together even to help you in times like this? And then we get into marketing with a special focus. I think you heard Lorna talking about this earlier on, on digital marketing, because that's the, all that we have at the moment. But even, even when the normal traditional marketing uh, strategies are there, we don't usually have as much access as we would like. And the effect of digital marketing through social media, through all the other platforms that are available is now becoming ubiquitous. It's everywhere. And we have to be involved in that. So we spend a lot of time talking about that. And then we have all our money classes because if there's anything that will keep you afloat in business, it is cash flow. There are many businesses that function simply on cash and can survive because they're generating cash. They can survive through many different uh, aspects of life. And so we talk about working capital. What is that? How do you keep the cash flow in your business? We do accounting, how to raise capital and, and begin not just about raising capital, but also the relationship between, between you and investors and the relationship between you and loans that you have taken as well. So the types of capital and how to deal with them. We also then go through uh, a couple of classes to help with just the technical side, things like taxation, legal issues as well. And then because money is so important, we come back just for one more refresher on the accounting side so that we can see how does this business make me wealthy? How does it begin to put money in my own pocket? This is what is so important. Uh, and then finally, ob obviously, because sometimes the biggest problem in a business is not the business, but the business owner. Uh, you know, it's said many different times that, that your, your, money, your, your money and the business money are not the same thing. Uh, if I was to take a poll of all the entrepreneurs that I've met, where in fact their account is the same, your personal account, business account, all of them the same thing. There's no difference. We have to begin to get the discipline that yeah. separates it so that your business becomes an asset. And we address that and how you also begin to build wealth for yourself as an entrepreneur and definitely through this program um, we, we do a lot of networking just like we've done here and you can imagine the kind of networks that you can get when you have a different group of people in the same room so it's a it's a really powerful learning session and it's all available online at this point point. and as I mentioned I, I'm not sure if I mentioned it earlier all the the professional classes are taught by industry professionals and we've taken it to another level where we've said don't only be an industry professional, but you also have to be an entrepreneur because we need you to not come and tell us theory. We want you to come and tell us what actually works out there in the world. So all those professional classes are taught by industry professionals and it works like this. Um, our first class is starting first week of June, 2nd of June. Um, and we have three options for attendance. It's Tuesday and Saturday in the morning from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, and these are really interactive sessions, a lot more interactive than we've been able to have here because we have a huge group in this session. But we usually get feedback, be able to talk, ask questions as we've been doing uh, throughout this session. And Wednesday evening as well from 6 to 9 p.m. In one week, it's the same content taught. So if that week is the module on strategy on Tuesday, Wednesday and Saturday, it's the same content. So if you miss Tuesday, you're able to get back. Somebody is drawing on my screen and I don't want you to draw on the screen. 
I'm trying to tell people about our products and you're busy covering it. Um, and here we go. So we are definitely going to be talking even about the registration right now during this lockdown period. We have a 20% discount um, just because we understand how, how difficult these times are. You register with 2,200 bob um, and then the tuition fees you can pay in three easy monthly installments of about 50. It's not about, it is 15,000 shillings per month. Um, first installment, second and third installment every month uh, through the, the program. Um, so on the screen, you have the contacts of Ruby. I'm sure you already probably know her. She's the one who put this together. I want to say a big thank you to Ruby. She's amazing. She's the one who's, who handles all the entrepreneurs in, in our sessions. Uh, she's just great. Her number is on the screen and her contact so that you can email her to let you know a lot more about the program and how it has helped many people. And I just thought um, we've got a couple of alumni in the panel. If uh, Anne, what was your experience going through the Centonomy Entrepreneur? Uh, how has it helped you, or was it a waste of your money? Uh, you could have done. You could have planted another field of, of um, strawberries. <laughs> ah, yeah. um, it was such an amazing experience, and uh, we did it with my husband. But we first uh, did the Centonomy 101, and then I did the Centonomy Investor class, and then I later, now we later did the Centonomy Entrepreneur. It, it, it is the best thing. And I think I want to mention one thing that um, specifically helped me. There was this, I'm not, uh, uh, correct me, Waitaka, if I'm wrong, the design okay. class where we had to draw a wallet. Yes, or, I'm sure taken by Sheba, yes, design thinking. It, it didn't make a lot of sense then when we, we had to draw our wallet and then think of what else you do with what, that wallet. Now, fast forward today, when uh, the corona came and then we had to sit and think we have strawberries, what else? What else can we do? Focusing on the same thing and uh, looking for other opportunities around it. So we came up with three things. Um, strawberries need 100% pollination, okay? So it means we have to plant sunflower, we have to plant trees, uh, the bottle brush trees to attract bees. But that was not enough because we have a huge um, greenhouse full of strawberries. We had to put the, now we have to put beehives, like a business, so we are doing uh, beekeeping as a business. Wow, wow. So it helps us uh, uh, pollinate our strawberries 100% and then we also get honey. That is one. Now it is raining heavily. It has been raining for quite some time. We decided to do uh, harvesting of water. Now we, we are creating a dam where the, when we harvest the water, all the water goes to the dam. Yeah. And the dam is not going to stay empty. What do we do? We are learning on uh, about fish, uh, fish keeping or something, how to keep fish. So in the dam, we are going to keep fish and that is going to give us an extra income. That was a game changer. When we were doing it, I was just wondering, now this design thing, what are opportunities do we have? Mm. Now it, it was eye opening. And if wow. we had not done the centonomy entrepreneurship, we would not have known how to think, focusing on one thing, but looking for other opportunities within it. Very good, very good. Lorna, what was your experience like? I, I, mean, I still remember those sessions talking about spices. Lorna. I must have been the, the, the most <laughs> headache student you've ever had. <laughs> uh, I have said this before. For me, I absolutely, without a doubt, uh, must say, I really, really loved the fear and vision class. I, I think you handled it. Not, I think I'm pretty sure you did that. Because for me, going into Centonomy, I honestly was taking it a day at a time, I, I would think. You see, when you just start a business and then it grows slowly, but you're not sure where you're headed. You're just like, ah, yeah, you know, I'm still making money here and there. It's fine. But you don't have that vision that you don't know what, what you're going to be doing 10 years down the line. It, it's, it's not a corporate yet in your mind. It's just yeah, yeah, I'm making money. Yes, let, let me just do that. But after that class, 
it was such an eye opener for me. It, it's been, I, I keep going back to the notes and looking at the fears, writing them down. Right now I look at them and laugh. I'm like, oh my God, what was I scared of? Because <laughs> now months down the line, I've implemented most of the things I learned in the class and I'm realizing I, I was my own worst enemy. I, I didn't have a vision. I didn't know where I wanted to be 10 years down the line. I didn't know where I wanted to be five years down the line. Now I have a 20 year plan <laughs> in place because of that class. I realized if you don't have a vision for where you're headed, even if you're running a potentially multi-billion business, you're not gonna, you never get there. You never get there. You need to have a vision. Even if you have, let's say, a small business like a salon or a cafe, or it could be as small as a barber shop. If you don't have a vision of where it's going to be, are you progressing from one branch to a hundred of them to owning your own hair products or selling the, you understand? You have to have a vision for you to know the steps to implement at this level heading there. And now I feel like in 10 years, I'm gonna be a cartel in the food space. <laughs> I want to be so big that anyone, anyone alive in this country has interacted with one of my products or more, or at least knows who I am. And that's, that's how big my vision is. <laughs> and I honestly, genuinely, um, credit that fear and vision class we did in Centonomy to opening my mind and letting me know that I'm good enough. Because my biggest fear was I, I'm not an expert. I, I didn't go to any uh, culinary school or institution of any sort. Everything I'm doing right now is self-taught. And uh, there's always that second guessing. But after we handled the fear, I feel like I can conquer the world and I sure will, or at least I'll die trying to do that. <laughs> Okay. Waibaka, you're muted. We can't hear you. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> you know, sometimes you get excited. <laughs> you're wondering, you're, you're saying things. I said to myself in my heart there that any business that is going to achieve the goals that Lona is talking about requires the kind of foundation that allows it to grow. If we're running Absolutely. our businesses like a Juakali without any records, not knowing who our relationships are, no plans for the future, no, no way to look back at what we've been able to achieve, that's what we're trying to break and hopefully build using this autonomy entrepreneur. Uh, very quickly, Wajiro, what was, what was your experience and, and hopefully it has helped you during this season? Okay, uh, my, my best take home, and actually I revisited it like last week, I think it was on structure and strategy where we did the business model canvas. And uh, we were advised you can always go back again, redo it. This means you just uh, like plan out your business. And this time after COVID, because we'll have a new normal, what the question I had on my table is, I need to do understand my new clients because they won't mm. be the old ones. So it made me think through, do a market research of how will the Upper Hill market now behave because that's what I really tap on. Yeah. And uh, what kind of meals do they want? Does that mean I need to come up with new menus? Uh, financially, how are things going forward? Yes, maybe my space is expensive. Do I negotiate with my landlord? If they're not willing mm -hmm. to negotiate, what's the next step? Because I can't be working and just paying the landlord. I also have an investment I put in place. How will I handle my staff? And I picked even something interesting. In the hotel industry, I think you also have short-term contracts with them to safeguard yourself. And yeah. uh, so like uh, three months, six months, just have short-term contracts with them. So the business canvas model was very good for me, even on the pricing of food. Are people willing to still spend the same amount they were spending on food? The takeout, mm. adaptation of technology. This has... Uh, all of us, we have realized the power of technology, even for ourselves. If you're quiet, if people don't see you're doing something, they forget about you. You need to be there on social media, share your meals, your recipes. Even when you're closed, maybe you can re share the moments that people shared uh, before they closed down and uh, just let people keep on thinking about you, the measures you've put in place, the hygiene measures, let people see the effort you're putting in. Then, of course, uh, part of it is also meeting amazing fellow entrepreneurs. I met Lona in the class. I, I remember her expressing her fears, and it's encouraging how you see her. And uh, out there on social media, what she's doing, it's amazing. You also keep learning. 
your fellow entrepreneurs keep you on toes. There are people you've gotten to work together with. And also it, it remains as a family. You'll see uh, Ruby, Waidaka, you'll follow all their classes. I enjoyed a recap of yesterday's Washeke session on fear, which was also very good. It reminded us back to our third session, which we did, of course, with you, Waidaka. So entrepreneur, uh, Centonomy Entrepreneur is an amazing course. Whether you are start startup, still going on with your business, thinking of the next big move, any time of your life, you just need to go back to it and do it. Wow, wow, wow. Guys, we are, we are almost out of time. So I just wanted to make sure that um, uh, Patrick has had a chance to, to say something to the people. Just say thank you. Tell us a little bit more where we can find you. Um, and then we'll give Reina and, and Chichi a chance also. Go ahead, Patrick. Thank you, Waidaka. Uh, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram as Patrick Guitar Photography. Um, and my number is there, you can call anytime. Hey, Patrick, you need to come for a bit more of the sales pitch. We'll help you, we'll help you. Don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Bit more energy in, in, the, in the sales pitch, right? Now. <laughs> yes, yes. Let, let's see if you can sell yourself a bit better than Patrick. Patrick just, <laughs> just come to my, just come to my. Oh, Idaka, in my defense. Oh, Idaka, <laughs> Idaka, in my defense, <laughs> the good work sells itself. <laughs> <laughs> We need to brag about it. I disagree. Hands up. Hands, hands up. Hands up. Hands up. Maybe it's a latest thing. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Reina, any last yes, words? Yes. And uh, what, where can find you? Uh, get your recipes as well. Um, I'm currently working on my first ebook. So if you'd want to be a tester of amazing chicken recipes, to put on Instagram, Reina underscore cooks. And I love community so much. So if you're a food content creator out there and you're wondering how to navigate through food styling or recipe development or being a home cook, I, my EDM is open. Let's talk. Very good. Yep. And if everyone in the panel, please just type your contacts and stuff in the chat box so guys can find you. Sometimes it's a bit hard to uh, catch everything as you said. So just do type them in the chat box. Chichi. Yes, Closing definitely. Um, first of all, Waidaka, it's good to see you. <laughs> and uh, yes, you can find me. I am on Instagram and on Facebook as Home Cooked with Chichi Sei. So that's Home Cooked with Chichi Sei. And um, definitely, I, I need to sell myself because this is brand new. It is less than two months old. And, uh, you know, the potential is amazing. I can just see how things are, you know, it's snowballing. It's, it's growing. It's growing from day to day. And um, not just for uh, the moms uh, who are tired of cooking, but also for a lot of smaller families or individuals, because I also take care of, you know, uh, smaller uh, or individuals who need to order something uh, for that evening or for that day. So yes, mm -hmm. Home Cooked with Chichi Sei on Instagram or on Facebook. You can get me there. And I do more than just the meals. I also supply the samosas and, and chapatis and spring rolls, lots of other pastries that we do. Excellent. Excellent. Good to yeah. see you as well. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this has been amazing. I wish I had more time. But I really want to make sure that guys are investing in themselves. Uh, I believe honestly that, that the biggest investment is that if you get yourself as the entrepreneur in the right mind space with the right information to navigate whatever comes your way in terms of business and you'll be able to make it through. That's what the Centonomy Entrepreneur is designed to do. Um, and we really believe in it. I want to make sure I haven't missed anything. So Ruby, who is uh, in charge of the Centonomy Entrepreneur, she's the program manager of the Centonomy Entrepreneur. Ruby, um, is there anything else that you'd like me to mention or would like to mention to the wonderful panels and panelists and everyone who's been in the room? Okay, thank you, Waidaka. So I think I'd just like to say thank you very much to the panelists. Thank you so much for giving us your time, sharing your wisdom, just really equipping people in the food industry and encouraging them, especially at a time like this. 
we really do appreciate you and we are happy that you were able to come and just share your, your wise words with everybody. I'd also like to thank everybody who attended the session. Thank you for making the time. Thank you for trusting us with two hours of your time today. We truly appreciate you. If you're interested in the entrepreneur program, feel free to reach out to me and I'll be able to assist. I'd also really want to thank Waidaka. He's such an amazing amazing moderator so thank you so much mm -hmm. Raidaka. we really thank do you. appreciate you thank you mm -hmm. thank you you guys god bless you all take care um yes stay safe stay home um but also it is time to think it is time to innovate it's time to go out and find those customers imagine they didn't leave this world uh I, there's, a, there's a talk i was listening to by one of my favorite writers um Dr. Miles Monroe, and he was speaking during the 2008 financial crisis, and he said, none of the money has left the world. It is still in this world. It's for us to go and find out where it is. So thank you so much, everybody. God bless. Thank Take you. care. Thank and you. It was we'll fun. We'll be seeing you soon on so many other of these opportunities that are on the way. Take care, guys. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.